we got a nice harvest of cucumbers. And as you can see, some of them are quite large, so I hope they're edible, but I'm going to make some pickles with them today. So stay with me to see how I make my crispy, crunchy cucumber pickles. So I grew up in an Asian household and we made pickles by using a vessel such as this, which is just a piece of pottery, and then putting all of your vegetables that you're going to pickle inside of here, uh, mixing it with a lot of salt, and then putting in a plate such as this that fits in, but you can see that it uh, has a lot of airspace in it around the sides to let some oxygen escape. And then setting that up with a rock on top of that to weight your vegetables down. And that's how I'm used to pickling. But I'm also gonna try this uh, pickling crock that I got from Amazon. It has the same process. Um, it has a lid to it though, that you can put water up around the top of this. So you'll put your vegetables inside. And then it comes with these um, ceramic weights that go down inside of this and then allow it to keep the pressure on your pickles. And then you have your, your lid that you put on and weight uh, water around the edge here. So I'm gonna try both ways to see how these pickles turn out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is cut off this blossom end of my cucumber um, because this is the end that has an enzyme in it that's could cause it to soften up. So I'm just gonna cut that blossom end off. And I can either slice these in slices or I can slice them for spears. So I'm just really taking a look to see how large the seeds are to determine if I wanna have uh, slices or spears and if I have to clear out a lot of the seeds. I also find that sometimes this end that doesn't have any seeds can get a little bitter. So I like to take that off until I get to some of the seeds because it'll generally be a little bit sweeter once I get that off. So as you can see with this cucumber, I left it on the vine a little bit too long. Um, and you can see there's a gap and it's a, a little bit, you know, less juicy there versus this one, which I pulled uh, just in time. But what I'm gonna do is just taste this because if it, if it tastes okay, I'm still gonna pickle it. If it's really bitter or dried out, I probably won't use it at all, but let's give it a taste and see what it tastes like. Oh. Still good, it's still nice and sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, pickle these. Um, I, I think it's kind of interesting, this little mark in here. So I think I'm gonna do the pickles this way on part of it and uh, maybe I'll cut it into um, spears on this other side here. So I don't measure my salt per se, I just kind of add it in. So I just take handfuls of it. And for a cucumber, I just kind of eyeball it. So it doesn't matter, this is just gonna sit and get salty. So it doesn't really matter, we're gonna get rinsed anyway. And I'm just going to take this and get it all mixed up. Make sure that everything's coated with some salt. And then I'll cut some more cucumber and put that in there next cement off and again I'm gonna give it a little taste on this cucumber it's really good mm, yummy and I'm gonna keep cutting these until I have this um, vessel to be pretty full all of this mixed in here. I want everything covered with salt. And it's already starting to get kind of wet and drawing the water out of the cucumbers now. You can already see it getting really moist and wet already. That's good. That's what I want to see. All right. Let's get that in there like that. 
I'm not adding anything else to this at this time because I'm just brining this. So I'm just going to put my plate down on here, right like that. And then I'm going to place my rock. Let's get that right underneath there, stay under there. Good. And then I'm just going to place my rock right on top to give it some pressure and let that sit for a few days. Now, for my next part of this pickling project that I'm doing, I'm going to start using this. But instead of using this as a fermenter, I'm going to use it as a briner. So I'm going to start by using water and salt and heating that up and then adding that to this and then getting that to cool down before I add my cucumbers. All right, so I'm going to add some water here. I'm using filtered water uh, just because that's what I use here. And then I'm going to add about half of a cup of salt to this here. So let's get this over. Add about half of a cup of salt. Maybe not, well, maybe about half right here. And I'm doing this because I want the salt to dissolve in the warm water. So let's get this going. Now that I have my salt and water mixture, I'm just gonna let this heat up, just enough really to get the salt to dissolve. While that's getting ready to simmer and dissolve, I'm gonna get my cucumbers all cut up. Now I'm just gonna throw all of these into my clean crock. And wait for that brine to get all nice and dissolved. smaller cucumbers, I'm going to go ahead and make them into um, little spears. So we're going to cut these to fit them into the jar here. So I need them a little bit shorter, a little bit, so they'll be able to be fitting in to the jar nicely. If I'm going to cut the end, I'm going to cut the end that doesn't have the seed because that's a little bit more bitter anyway and just make sure that I have enough cut off so that I can have a little bit of space in my jar. And I'll just cut these into spears and put these in here. like most of our Himalayan salt has dissolved into this beautiful pink water so now I'm just going to let this cool down and then we'll add some more fresh water to it before we brine. It's to cool down a little faster so I'm going to add a little bit of ice Ooh, to my water. There we go. So I know I'm going to get a lot of people saying how salty do you need this water to be this brine and my answer is, as salty as when you get in the ocean, you get salt water in your mouth, that would be the perfect amount of salt or brine that you want for these pickles. Let's add our brine in. You wanna have enough to just cover the pickles. They'll start to float just a little bit. It's enough to get these to float, right? So now I'm going to want to add in these little things to keep my pickles submerged. These weights are going to help keep my pickles submerged in here and still let oxygen and stuff float up. So let me see if I can get that one little pickle under there and then there we go. That's how it should look. Put my lid on here and just let this sit. You can put water around the edge. You'll see in this lid that there's a little bit of a, a hole here for that's for oxygen. Um, to, and fermentation to escape out of here and the water will keep it sealed. So I'll pull a little fresh water inside of here. You can see I just put enough water in to stay below the rim here that allowed this to stay submerged inside that water. Just enough brine left here that I'm going to add that to our little mason jars. And we're not pickling just yet, we're really just um, brining them. 
And then all I have to do is get my lids on this is just to keep them and get them brined for a couple of days. All right. All right, so now we have our brining methods. In their brining process, we have our dry brine, which is just salt and cucumbers under pressure. I have my wet brine, which is cucumbers with the brine that I made on the stove, also under pressure and in a fermentation crock. And then I have my brine with cucumbers in a mason jar here. And you're gonna wanna let these sit for a minimum of 12 hours but you could have them go up to seven days. Now, if you're gonna to go to seven days, I probably recommend that you refrigerate them. I'm probably gonna go two days with these and then start pickling, so I am not gonna refrigerate them and I'm gonna leave them on my counter. But you can go up to seven days. I would just recommend that you stick them in the refrigerator if you're going to do that. All right, so it's been 24 hours since I put this dry brine in and you can see here, we're getting a lot of water from the um, cucumber in here. So I'm gonna take this out right here and I'm actually gonna flip it over. They look pretty good just to try for a little more pressure this way you know, on the pickles. And now I'm going to put this back on there. So let's take a look. It's been 24 hours um, and look at our crock. You'll see things looking pretty good in there. A couple of them are floating. Um, that should be okay since I'm gonna go ahead and start pickling these in a, another day or so. All right, so yesterday after I went off tape, I had some leftover brine, so I created some uh, carrot pickles here in this jar. And these are our pickles that we um, put in just into the mason jars and they're brining nicely. So hopefully by tomorrow, we'll be able to start pickling these. All right, so it's been two days since we've put our pickles in our crock and started brining them. So let's take a look at them and see how they're doing before we get to pickling them. All right, this is 48 hours later and now you can see again, more water has come into this and these are probably ready to get pickled today. Let's take a look at this, see if I can get this out of here. Yeah, we're gonna pickle these today. All right, let's take a look at our crock. Yeah, and as you can see here, these are brine. There's a little bit of a cloud in the water, so we're gonna start pickling these and rinse them and pickle them today. Our jars are looking good as well, so we will get these pickled today too. Now I have already sterilized my jars. I usually put my jars in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes or so. That sterilizes them perfectly for me. If you wanna go ahead and, and put them in a water bath and sterilize them, that's fine, but I just put them in the oven. It just seems easier than trying to dry them off and all of that. So I've already done that. So now all I'm gonna do is rinse off my pickles so I can get some of that um, briny sauce off of all of them. I'm just gonna set these aside and drain the other ones. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my pickling solution because I want it to heat up and get nice and warm before I add it to the jars. And my solution is to use half amount of water and half of it being vinegar. So I'm using four cups of uh, water right here. And then I'm also gonna use four cups of vinegar right here. And I use white vinegar. Um, I don't use apple cider vinegar or anything like that. Um, this is how my grandmother did it. So. This is what I use. Um, it's To me, it's just less chance of anything happening with the mother or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure I have four cups. Um, you can do a little bit less, but um, I like a lot of vinegar in my pickles. So here we go. We've got equal amounts of vinegar and water. So here's my vinegar going into my water. And then I like to add about um, a, a quarter of a cup of salt. Uh, to this. Um, they're already salted pretty well from the brine, so I'm just going to add a quarter of a cup of salt to this and then bring this up to a, a boil. 
So all I'm gonna do is heat this up and get it all started to dissolve the salt. I don't put any other spices or anything in at this point. I will add my spices to my jar, but this is just water, vinegar, and salt. And I'm only heating it up really to get the salt to dissolve. Okay, so I have all of my sterilized jars and lids here. I have my filling, uh, you know, utensils and my thing to get all the bubbles out. So I'm getting ready for that uh, pickling brine to be ready for this. In the meantime, I'm gonna put all of my spices in my jar so that I can get those all ready for the brine and the pickles. Um, I'm going to put one clove of garlic in each of the jars. So I just basically do the old smasheroo and get the garlic to uh, come off of the, the actual skins and everything. And it doesn't matter to me that it breaks apart or anything like that. I just wanna get a garlic clove and then I'm gonna add that right into my jar. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add um, one teaspoon each of mustard seed here. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon around that of some dill weed. I don't have any fresh dill right now, so I'm having to use um, some dehydrated and a little bit of dill seed as well. Just a little bit. Since I have the weed in, I'm not as worried about it. Um, I do like dill, so I like to put a little extra dill in mine. So I would say about a teaspoon of each. Now I'm just gonna pack my jar with my pickles. So I'm gonna start with my spears here. I'm just gonna throw all of my spears that were in two jars into one here. There we go. And I'll put my carrots that I started into this jar. This is the batch of pickles from the um, Asian crock. These are the pickles from the fermenting crock. That's in there. There we go. Now I like to take a clean paper towel and just wipe off all of the edges before I start to fill them, just to be sure that um, anything on the edges is wiped off. Ready to be filled. You can use either of these to fill with. I tend to like to use this one because um, I can actually reduce it down and it'll sit and be nice and stable on top of the jar. All right, we've got our pickling juice here. We're going to start adding this in. to fill it to about half an inch from the top. There we go. Move this here and just make sure I have no air bubbles. Let's get all these air bubbles out. Now I'll just wipe it down one more time just to be safe. And then I'm going to go ahead and seal this just finger tight, just like that.
so I had some extra of the pickling juice left so I just put it in a mason jar and I'll save this to use for pickling just for day pickling if I want to put some vegetables in here and let them sit 24 hours just to get some crunchy vegetables from the garden. Okay so I'm going to be canning in a stock pot today and I do have a big canner but it's, it's way too big for this. I'm only canning four things for this and I'm going to take this which is um, this little uh, riser that I got out of my Instapot and I'm going to put that down in here so that I can keep my cans off of the bottom and keep them from breaking while they're in here. I'm not going to be bringing this to a boil today. I'm going to be doing a, a low uh, temperature pasteurization. So this will only come, I'll start it off at 140 and I'll bring it up to 180 to 85 degrees for about 30 minutes. And um, I'll be taking the temperature today with my meat thermometer because I broke my regular thermometer. <laughs> Right now it's about 120 degrees and I probably could start putting in my, uh, my cans right now. Now, I'm going to want to cover this with a little bit more water to make sure that these stay covered underneath. So I'm gonna add a little bit of warm water to this. Now, since I'm not bringing this to a boil, I'm just going to leave the lid off and just get these to temperature and then let these sit at temperature for about 30 minutes. Um, but this will allow me to kind of test to make sure that it's staying at temperature and not getting too hot. I don't want it over 185 degrees, but I also don't want it to fall below 180 to make sure that I can get these pasteurized properly. So we'll just keep taking that temperature and seeing where we are. All right, so I have put this probe inside of here so I can monitor my temperature and that'll monitor right here. Getting close to 180 degrees, so I'm gonna turn this off of high and put it down into um, about medium. Um, I don't want this to get too hot, I just want it to get to about 180 and hold, so I'm gonna play with this a little bit just to make sure that my temperatures stay around that 180 range. It'll come up to 180 here pretty quickly. All right, we've reached our 180 marks, and now I just have to keep it between 180 and 185. All right. We have been 30 minutes, about 180 degrees, so now we're gonna remove them from the water. All right, we've reached 180 degrees, between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes, so now I'm gonna remove them to cool. We're gonna to wanna to let these sit for about 24 hours here and just let them sit and slowly cool down. Just getting some extra water off the lids. All right, so we've removed our pickles from our canning bath. Again, 180 to 185 degrees for 30 minutes. These will sit on the counter for about 24 hours to cool and then I'll put them away for about two weeks just to make sure they get that really good dill flavor into the pickles. So let's see how they go and we'll taste them again in about two weeks. All right, it's been a couple of weeks since I canned my cucumbers and my carrots. Let's open them up and taste them and see how they turned out. This first one here was the one that we brined in the crock, the wet method, so let's give this a taste. They taste really good, super dilly and nice and salty and sour, but you know, they're really not crunchy like I thought they would be. Let's try these. These were the ones that were dry brined, the um, Asian method where I put them in a crock with just salt. Let's give these a try here. Mm, a little more crunchy, but still, not a crunch like you'd expect from a pickle. And last one is, these are the spears. These are the ones that I put in the mason jar with um, some brine. Let's see how these turned out. I can tell already by looking at these that they're not going to be crunchy. You can see here it's 
really bendy. Let's taste it though. All these turned out really, really good. And they're gonna be perfect with sandwiches and things like that, but they're not as crunchy as I'd like them to be. So I'm gonna to need to play with that low temperature pasteurization to see if I can figure out a way to make these, you know, much better as far as crunchiness. But the taste overall, they're delicious. And I can't wait to take them and share them with my family tonight at dinner. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me grow my channel. Until the next time, grow what you eat, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Lime Garden is still producing these ginormous cucumbers. I just picked these two today. This could be a lethal weapon, man.